In this segment of Q's and Error Rods, I'm going to be working on the concepts of multiplication. And multiplication as a repeated addition, and that we can break multiplication up into a series of multiplications that can be put together. So we might want to start uh, an idea around multiplication around skip counting. So I would possibly start off with something that looks like this. We have two, and then we have another two, and then we have another two, and then we could skip count and go two, four, six, eight, ten, and we want to make sure that it's equal to a ten. So by this time now we've learned our our uh, colors, and so we know that a color a ten is equal to two of these, uh, is equal to five of these, and so we can come up with a skip count: two, four, six, eight, ten, or two plus two plus two plus two plus two equals ten. And we can write it red plus red plus red plus red plus red plus red equals an orange. Or we can say 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 10. The other thing we can do now is say, well, how many how many reds do I have here? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can write 5 sets of reds. So we might write it this way. 5 sets of or 5 groups of reds equals an orange, which is a 10. Mathematically, we would write it this way. 5 groups of, we use this mathematical symbol, and 5 groups of what? Five groups of reds or five groups of two? And depending on what grade you could use a variety of symbols. So five groups of red equals ten. So five R, five reds, five R's equals ten. Five groups of two equals ten. Five groups of reds equals the ten, which is the orange. So there's lots of different writing, and depending on what grade level you would working with, uh, the younger grades I'd probably start off with that five sets of or groups of. I pick one and stick with it, depending on which one you want to use. Uh, I might say something like this: five. The X stands for groups of R's equals ten, and five groups of twos equals ten. Once they've understood that the reds are our twos. We also want to make sure and use a, a question like this so that we can take a look at uh, some other ideas around mathematics. So if I took these groups of two and then another group of two, what mathematics could I write for that then? I can use the associative property and say, well, I got five groups here, but I could break it down into two groups of ten. Uh, pardon me, two groups of two. There's my two groups of two. Then I've got to, I'm going to add that plus another two groups of two, plus another one group of two. I could also break it down a different way and show that three groups of two, three groups of two, plus two groups of two, of, sorry, two groups of two, giving me a total of five groups of two, which gives me ten. So I take my color here and three times two, three groups of two is six, and I can see that because two, four, six, and I'm going to add that two plus another two groups of two, two groups of two is four, and six plus four is going to give me my ten. So we want to be able to show that we can take that five groups of two and break it down into all sorts of different combinations. We could have one group of two plus two groups of two plus two groups of two, uh, four groups of two plus one group of two. There's lots of different ways that we can break that down. We want students to be able to become comfortable with decomposing our multiplication into more easily used or recognizable groups. So that's going to lead into the strategies for memorizing or working with our multiplication times tables. Now after kids play around with this, they also know that two yellows, however, make an orange. And so how does that work as a multiplication question? So how does that work relative to what we've already done? Well, so now we used to have five groups of reds. Now we have two groups of yellows. So what multiplication would we write for that? Well, we'd write it in the other order. So now we might see this as two groups of yellows. There's our two yellows, one, two. So our two groups of yellows equals ten. And so mathematically we say two groups of fives equals ten. And so we want to compare this one, five groups of two, to this one, which is two groups of five. Notice and have the students notice that they're both 
on orange. They're both 10. They're just different ways of getting there. And that they end up producing the same length, and this is the commutative property, where it doesn't matter what order that we put the, the numbers in. Five groups of two and two groups of five work the same way. And you can work this through with many different multiplication facts and of the multiplication family. Another term that lots of students get confused with are the difference between factors and multiples. So if we're looking at um, our red, every time I build a train of reds, I'm producing a multiple. So I start off with two, the next train would be a four, so that train now is six, and the next one is going to be eight, and so on and so forth. So multiples are all the different trains I can make. So there's my trains, some of my multiples for two. My multiples of three are going to be a train of threes. So what numbers can I make that are going to be trains of threes? And so this again relates our skip counting to our multiplication, groups of all the same color, groups of the same color or the trains of the same color are going to be our multiples. Now if we're talking about uh, the dark green, which is the six, and we talk about our trains, there's our multiples of, of our green. So there's multiples of six, six, 12, 18. But if we're looking for factors now, I'll just move these off to the side and get rid of them. We want to find out what trains make up six. So we can make up trains of whites, but then we can make up trains of whites for all of them. So one is going to be a factor of all of them, of any number. And so we can see our trains of white. Can we make trains of red? And we can see that we can make trains of red. So our reds must also be a factor of our dark green. Can we make trains of green? Well, we take two of these and we can make trains of green. So green must also be a factor of my dark green. Can I make trains of purple? And the answer is no. Now the question would be, should I check all these other ones? Well, do I need to check if I notice that this one's already too big, would these ones also already be too big? So at how, what point do I have to stop looking for factors? And we can figure out if, after playing for a while that if we only look halfway, we don't have any factors that are going to be bigger than those anyway. And if we're looking at our blue, we can f see that we can make a train of whites, and it takes nine whites to make that, and we can take a train of light greens or greens. And so those are both factors. So one and three are factors of nine. And we can make a train of one blue, so the blue would also be classified as a factor, just as one dark green. So one dark green, or six whites, two, uh, three groups of two, or two groups of three. Here we have our nine groups of one, or one group of nine, and our three groups of three. So if we can make a train that's equal to the same, to our original block, those are called factors. And we can talk about all the different factors of our numbers, uh, one to ten, and we can also make our numbers larger as well. So we can talk about what are the factors of this number, an orange and a brown. Well, orange and a brown is going to give me a total of 18, so again, I can make my 18 ones, and I'm not going to bother doing that, because each color we can make up with ones. So I've got 10 of those plus 8 of those for a total of 18. I can use my reds and do that with 9 reds, or 9 times 2. I can do it with my greens and take 6 of those. If I'm taking my greens, I know that 2 greens make a dark green, and so I can do it with sets of those as well. And I can also do it with sets of nines. And so I can find my factors of 18. I've got my 18 ones. I've got my 118. I've got my nine twos or my two nines. I've got my six threes or my three sixes. And I can see those kind of factor families again. Uh, just like we did the addition families, we can do the factor families as well. And it's a, a nice visual way to talk about the difference between a factor, which is the pieces of the same colors to make up a color, versus multiples, which is the same color over and over and over and over again. All the numbers, the multiples of nine would be all the blue nines together. 
versus the factors of 9 are all the smaller colors that I can make a train up to equal 1, 9. So it's just a different way, a visual, to keep the factors and multiples uh, from being confused for our students. Hopefully you can see that now that we're talking about these factor families, you can see where fractions are going to come in as well, and talking about equivalent fractions and fractions. Fractions and factors and multiplication are all related, and hopefully the students can start to see those kind of connections when they see all these things working together as well. We can also use uh, our, our Cuisinart rods to talk about the area model as well. So here we have one group of three. And here we have another one group of three, so we could write it like this. So we have one group of three and another one group of three for a total of two groups of three. And that gives us our six. We can also look at it the other way. We can look at that we have one group of two, we have another group of two, and we have another group of two. And so that gives us three groups of two. And so we can notice that our 2 by 3 array is the same as our 3 by 2 array, which talks about our area model. And so we can look at, use our quizzing error rods for their area model as well, and talk about how that would work as a model for understanding multiplication. So in this segment, I've talked about factors and multiples. I've talked about repeated addition. I've talked about the commutative property of multiplication and the associative property that allows us to break it down into two groups of two plus another two groups of two plus a one group of two instead of saying five groups of two. So we can use these into a lot of different aspects of multiplication, and the students can see it in the length model or in the area model.